Aha, fantastic. Okay, so I mentioned uh, in the last sort of 1v1 video that I did that I really wanted to see this arena map getting played with a 3v3 or a 4v4 focus, and Coda has actually provided that. Uh, so we have a Mirkwood force. So I've not actually seen him play as Mirkwood uh, before, I don't think. Anyway, Blades of Imondweir there with some Ents. And Woodland Realm Patrol. Out front, we've got the Elders of the Elven King, the Wardens of Ammon Lake, Woodland Protectors, and lots and lots of Woodland Protectors. Coming around the side there, we've got the more Blades of Imondweir, Hirioth, Hirioth, Hiri Ek, and uh, more Hiri Ek. Good. Then, uh, Sindar of the Girdle, Woodland Realm Patrol, and Greenwood Watchers there. No fancy Rangers or anything like that, but uh, on a pitch battle, you generally wouldn't see that. Um, nice little bump we got there. Cool, cool, cool. Anyway, uh, next to him, he has Umbar, played by Inarius. So he's got his Alcarondas Faithful. You don't see these guys too often, but they are really the kings of melee cav. You really have to be something um, quite supreme to be taking these guys out. Uh, I've used them before uh, quite effectively. I will normally always go for the Umbar, uh, the Warlords of Umbar, though. Uh, but if he is really wanting to snag down some enemy cav, he can do no wrong by taking them. He's got the Alcrondas Legion here too. Corsair Infantry, bold, bold, bold. Then uh, Corsair Blackguard, some Belagar Fitman, good to see. Uh, uh, Balkath Marksman and Shield Bearers too. No armor upgrades. As I say, whenever I take these guys, I will always have the armor upgrade on them, so it's quite rare for me to actually look at them not upgraded. I think they look amazing with it, actually, just this, with that sort of red, but uh, but no, I'm, and the shield bears behind, but I always just give them the armor upgrade. Just, you know, why not? Uh, Corsair Infantry there, and then more Balakath Marksman even, sorry. And the Alcarondas Legion there, and more Alcarondas Legion. Then we have the Warlords too. Okay, so he has gone for the Warlords as well, and the Sentinels are in the center. So with both these cavalry units, uh, Inarius is going to be a tough force to face. And he's got some wargs here. By Selic. okay. Yeah, good, good. So we've got the wargs, uh, warg riders, and warg skirmishers. Then we have Trolls of the White Hand, Urukai Infantry, Dunlending Clansmen there, Pikes, Pikes, more Pikes, and more Dunlending Clansmen. Then some infantry hiding in these trees right now and more warg skirmishes more warg riders and the champions of the white hand jeepers okay and the lurch hunting pack uh then the last ally here is uh, finrod um i'll yeah yeah i think i usually normally see him as finrod he's got his elder Inway lancers there and then the riders of brunin or the brunin sorry yep then we have the swords of rivendell an armor upgrade for the swords of rivendell today nice to see uh, Elder Emwe Swordmasters, Elder Emwe Archers, Elder Emwe Spears, and Elder Emwe Spears. Then Swords of Rivendell, and lastly, the Swords of Rivendell again. Uh, and more cavalry. So we have the Riders of the Brunin and the Gwaithi Rockdor. And in the centre, the Gwaithi Arthand. So, a lot of cavalry for all of the blue team today, which is interesting. And um, But we've got uh, a whole team of pretty well... Uh, well experienced players so we're not we shouldn't see very much in the way of micro loss from these guys if these guys have taken cavalry units so well like four cavalry units or in Selic's case five um they will definitely be using them properly they will uh you know they're not just going to be uh, making mistakes here and uh coda doesn't have any cavalry actually he's saying that he's got the sendar of course but um he's only got one and umbar does have two but all in all that's a lot of cavalry for the entire army I like this Coda sort of positioning his guys on the side. He's going to immediately sort of fold around in behind the uh, the sturdy umbar lines. And uh, I love this position. This is so cool. I love that just little choke point there. And I think out of all of the deployment, I think Inarius has a really entertaining one for me. I'm not too bothered about trees. Uh, I would, I don't really, I wouldn't like to be Celtic. And um, Finrod here. Yeah, but I think over everybody, Anarius has the most fun uh, position to deploy in. And I can definitely see why Coda is coming around, because it would be lovely to get quite a few people sort of battling around in this area. Putting down stakes, as I say, when we've got a pretty heavy cav presence, putting down stakes always scares me. But, uh, 
you know, they're going to be aware of that. And also it just means that he doesn't have to get a, you know, Balakith footman or something, or sorry, a uh, Belagar footman uh, right behind these, uh, these marksmen to look after them. They can look after themselves just by putting down the stakes. Uh, leaves the footman free to guard the Corsair infantry. And yeah, yeah, good, good, good. But, um, hmm. Umbar working side by side with Markwood should be pretty powerful, I'd say. Uh, what we got on the other side? I think this is... Um, I don't want to embarrass myself. Is this Lothlorien? Maybe. Uh, Dorwinian next to them either way. And then the oh, Khazadum and the Black of Mordor. Nope, that's not black. That's red. Oh, shoot. Yeah, what's that red before again? I've, I've made a mistake with that red a few times. Hmm, I don't know. Uh, oh, come on, boys. Deploy. Uh, probably should have gone through that faster than 0 0.1 speed, but uh, mistakes were made, I suppose. Uh, but no, just got done recording some stuff for Divide and Conquer, so, but I was just still in like a big recording mood, so I was like, yeah, let's 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 blast this summer forge. Good, I was right. Starling's got his Lothlorien forces and deployed, oh, elf v elf, right in front of each other. Uh, the outnumbered Elder Wen Elder Enwe archers are going to be struggling. Uh, let's see. Kindred right there, and then double Loranand archers. Behind them, some woodland protectors. And Loranand mounted company. Double, uh, triple, sorry, Loranand axemen. Karis Galadron guardians in the back, and more woodland protectors. Then more Loranand mounted company, and the Watchers of the Golden Wood on the flank, with the Riders of the Golden Wood behind them. Yes, Lothlorien's, sorry, I am Lattice's archer line is going to be getting shredded. And I think Fenrod's going to have to come screaming forward. The real benefit he's got is his calf supremacy. But those Loranand Mounted Company are going to be at least trying to their best to hold back the Imladris calf. Uh, they'll kill off a few of them too. Uh, Sin of the Gar Dark Cloud here. He's got Elvelin Vineguard and Merquindy Glade Lords there. Uh, Elvelin Marksman. Probably some stuff hiding in these trees, no doubt. Uh, more vine guard there. Oh gosh, you're not going to sneeze, Ryan, are you? You won't embarrass me like that. No, good. Nope. Nope, I'm fine, I'm fine. Double artillery from Muffin series. He's got his catapult and his ballista. He's Angmar. So that was, uh, I, I was presuming that, but I didn't want to go out and, uh, and say it. Um, then, uh, next to that, Angmar halberd line. And a, oh gosh, a nice bulge with the hammer guard. But mainly a pikemen and guardians of Karn Doom line. With the pikemen being armor upgraded, that is a fearsome phalanx. And then the troll of Angmar to watch out for them. Then we've got Rune over here by Maven, and uh, he's got his scion rim. Out front, the Variag mercenary is good for skirmishing, of course. And then the main line of Eastron clansmen with the armor upgrade. Good, cheaper than the flag rim to protect them, but still very effective. And then the gap rim behind. And Ennis Rim on the flank there, Flag Rim forming up behind the lines, Dragon's Wrath, Warlords, and the Dragon Knights to their side. So we'll jump into this. Um, definitely Red Team are not low on cavalry. Oh, is this a... Just, oh, we could be like nestled up here. No, that doesn't... That looks kind of cool. You can't really see what's going on, but yeah, something like that it could be nice for an image. Cool. Anyway, um... The uh, cavalry game is not immediately going to be going in the in the blue team's favour, I would say, but they definitely do have uh, the advantage, I would say, for Cav. Starling's really got Fenrod. I would not want to be Fenrod right now. Um, I think he is falling back, and that's probably for the best. The Godlim are coming up to try and engage in a bit of an archery duel. But those Elder Enway archers have already taken a real beating, and that's how, that's an expensive, expensive unit to be suffering uh, casualties to. Um, but I think Fenrod is happy enough just to fall back, lose some ground, and then get the majority of his manpower sent over to the left to back up his allies. And I think we might end up with a big clash in the centre, but of course that's exactly what uh, the uh, artillery crews want. Oh, Barrow White's popping up from hidden, uh, well from being hidden. Uh, they want everybody to be clenched up together uh, where they will be most effective. Oh god, oh god, that needs to separate. It is uh, a good target, though. Very good target. But uh, unfortunately, no, he's uh, he's running them now. That could have been rough. If we had lost like three trolls right off the bat to an artillery strike, that would be really upsetting. Um, yep, and Arius is doing, uh, doing the right thing here, just coming in to uh, 
all of that i like that yeah so he, he came at he's coming in to sort of just be a uh be a bit of a shield for the uh murkwood elves and uh it looks like these stakes were actually set up by Koda, so that was uh, some clever stuff, so they're going to be able to use that to protect their left flank. But once again, I'm always just a bit nervous because the amount of cav we've got. Uh, but saying that, uh, the runic men have uh, have brought quite a lot of cavaliers too. Wow, Koda's actually coming all the way around with some of his units. He's leaving most of them behind with Umbar, but he's taking over a few of these special units to, uh, to support the right flank. Rides of the Golden Wood coming forward. Gwaithi Arthand's Arthan standing in their way. You don't really want to unload fire into the front of the Gwaithi Arthand. You're not really even as high damage as the Rides of the Golden Wood are. That's not really going to be doing too much. But I think he's wanting to come over. Shooting in the back of the Swordmasters would be lovely. Or the... Oh! Swords of Rivendell. You'll rack up a lot more kills doing that. Wow. Yeah. Some of those guys will get up. But cheapers. Uh, War Skirmishers chasing them down. And it uh, looks like, yeah, Finrod is now falling back. He's got like a sort of a skirmish thing going on though. And Starling, Starling would suffer if he advanced into this. And unless he does it slowly and carefully. So this sort of formation is uh, is just going to be buying time, I'd say. And uh, is it going to be, you know, is it going to be enough though? Uh, anyway, Kelix come forward with the Warg skirmishers. The Riders of the Golden Wood could mince them. But I'm sure they just don't really want to be using their ammunition up on that right now, I suppose. Dunlending Clansmen, just very cheap and uh, very good for their, for their price. I really like the Dunlending Clansmen, but uh, they will get eviscerated by anything, any sort of fire that's going to be coming at them. Catapult, found a new target. I guess just any, like, if you just hit into this pike line, it's worth it. But I don't know. Um, I don't know what I'd go for with the with the artillery right now. I think I might, to be honest, I would probably want to be holding my ammunition, but he's found something. Lurch hunting pack, I suppose. But no, I think I think he's going for the uh, for the phalanx. But he's just not really landing any great targets. The ballista, though, is definitely going for the lurch hunting pack. And um, that's not a bad target, I'd say. Two hit point units, so it's uh, it's always it's always good to try and take them down with Artie. With the Arthan falling back, Coda is actually coming on up. Yes, these guys have covered a lot of ground quite quickly, and uh, well, micro like. Coda's got the micro ability for this, but this is always a big issue when you've got some units all the way over here and uh, the main bulk of your army is over on the far side of the battlefield. Looks like the boys are more than happy just to let this artillery crew use up most of the ammo. A few of these men have gone down. Oh, cheaper sick, who are they? Oh, some elven archers there. Looks like the wardens of ammo and lank uh, have, uh, have taken a bit of a beating there from artillery. What are we at? One for one? Yeah, not too bad. Just a lot of sort of staring. Uh, well, good bit of skirmishing. Not really sort of staring down. Balakith marksman, amazing at skirmishing. Variag mercenaries as well, really damn good at skirmishing. So, um, yeah, <laughs> they're going to be unloading a lot of fire on each other. But it's not going to be super effective. Uh, because either both sides have got some semblance of armor, but they've both got that shield. So uh, that's going to be very useful. Ooh, artillery fire. Wardens of Ammon Lank. Very lucky there, only to suffer one casually. And the Warg Skirmishers as well, only taking two. I think he's just wanting to get that artillery used up, make sure that it doesn't end up getting attacked later on, and, uh, you know, not able to get all of its ammo, because that would be uh, pretty disastrous. If you take a unit like artillery, if you take some sort of artillery unit to a pitch battle, you need to get it used properly. Uh, if the enemy is going to be. Um, stopping it halfway through then that's a real waste of money Lauren and archers leading the way without any spearmen assistance so i know that yeah you would suffer about greatly just by charging that but still that's risky to me godlim are quite extended out they're going to be getting some good fire on here but all it's going to take is a quick stop yep they've stopped now and they're going to be it's going to be pretty disastrous for the poor godlim this, uh, this high mass fire, they are of course throwing out high mass fire, but they're receiving it from the Watchers, and that's going to stop their firing animation. So even though these guys are still alive, we have the Riders of, um, of the Bruin coming forward, Mounted Company trying to stop one unit off them, but uh, but still, I think that maybe this was a little bit too bold from Starling. 
and um, he's going to receive a pretty nasty charge. Of course, the Riders of the Brunin are going to be suffering for said charge, uh, receiving a lot of arrow fire, and of course they didn't have their blades out when they made that charge, so they had uh, sort of wasted a quick second taking, uh, putting out their, putting away their bowls, sorry. Still pretty bloody, though. And they've, they've got away not too bad. I guess everybody was still just wanting to focus on the Godhelm. Looks like Coda's actually wanting to come over here and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with his wood elf, uh, wood elf brother, which is quite cool to see. Uh, we got a bit of a clash. Oh, we do. Uh, the trolls of... Uh, sorry, what are these? The trolls of Gundabad? Um, no, these are the trolls of Angmar, sorry. Uh, coming in, smashing into the Dunlending Clansmen. And to be honest, the Dunlending Clansmen will have a decent cost-effective trade here. Like, the trolls of Angmar are going to be slicing through oodles off them, but as long as their morale holds, they'll they'll bring them down. And uh, at the end of that, it's, uh, it's, it's all about that money. And uh, the trolls, uh, well, the, the Dunlending clansmen, sorry, are uh, are not too expensive, of course. Uh, the Barrow Whites, though, are going to be causing a fear uh, effect to these uh, low morale clansmen. Of course, they're not too devoted to the fight. Uh, Warlords of Umbar coming in, and if they can start cycle charging the Barrow Whites, that's amazing for the for the blue team. Going to need a uh, well, oh, if this ballista can turn around, start doing some damage to them. This is always the issue with uh, with playing as Angmar when you do start getting rushed by units like well, knights, uh, because you wow oh god that was painful yeah that was very oh no a few of them are getting back up but still that was pretty rough on those barrow whites but as I say uh, when it comes to trying to shoot down units like the uh, the well, any sort of knight uh, Angmar just doesn't have enough range damage to to make that happen you know unless you really want to get the scourge raiders used but that's not AP damage and. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a nuisance. Of course, our black Anari is just keeping everything safe from the arty, hiding behind these sort of little rock formations. Yeah, just carrying themselves through the Barrow Whites. Barrow Whites really do not have any mass, uh, being sort of ghostly figures, so you are able to sort of run through them without too much issue like that. They really can't hold you in place, but at the end of the day, FFA Muffins has only lost a few guys to that. And, but Anaris is long from being done, Imer Halber is coming in to try and stop this. Oh, we got, uh, yeah, Sin, Sin. We've not really seen too. You know, I've not really been looking at Sin too much, but I think he's just got a lot of these uh, Velen units that have just been firing away constantly, and they're going to be getting some good close range fire. Even up against the front of, a, of an Urukai infantry line, it's um, it's going to hurt over time. Uh, but those, they do not put out much damage. Okay, we actually do have quite a good movement from, uh, from Isengard, really coming forward and swamping over Lothlorien. Backed up by the Elves of Mirkwood and, of course, I'm sure a few of the um, Emladris forces. So we do need Sen to jump into action, which he is. A lot of these units popping up from being hidden. Merquendi Stalkers, their morale damage from the Poison Arrows is not going to be fun to deal with. Uh, with a lot of these Orcish men, but the disciplined uh, Uryx of, uh, of Isengard should, uh, should hold out. Woodland Protectors going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Ents. Uh, definitely not being able to use up all of their javelin fire, so they need to uh, need to try and get out of there. But they're spearmen in melee, so if they can kill off some of those calves, that'd be great. Ents carrying on through into the Watcher's Goldenwood, but uh, it's stopping them from firing, really. Uh, once the Riders of the Goldenwood still opening up, uh, I think we're going to have to slow down a little bit more, really. Uh, just to make sure we're not missing something else that's going on on the other side of the battlefield. That was just a quick attack. Well, looks like the, the calves are coming out. But uh, the trolls and the ants are fighting in the same area. Those guardians are kind of mixed up a bit. Eh, even as good as pike, even as amazing as the guardians are, they're still just pikemen, and pikemen do not really do great up against trolls. So, um, especially such heavily armored trolls, the trolls of the White Hand. But yeah, Kel sorry, Selic is still just flooding on forward, and uh, I would really love to see good. Yep. I'd love to see some of these Imladris infantrymen, which we're seeing now. They've really got the quality to, to just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a lot of uh, Lothlorien's men. I think Starling's going to be having some trouble here. Uh, he's just going to have to make sure that he really makes the enemy pay for this. Uh, Muffins is coming on in to, to support him, and maybe together... Wow, it's, it's funny how close these guys are to each other. You know, you'd think they were allies there, but no, they're about to about to clash. And that's not going to be good for, for Celtic's pikes there. Uh, oh god. We need to maybe, yeah, I'm glad I'm going for 0.6 because things are happening quite fast now. It was a good bit of skirmishing at the start. I thought we were going to get quite a slow, methodical battle, but no, things are going pretty ham now. Um, 
as Muffins is swamping on over Jeepers sake. This went from very good to very poorly for all these poor clansmen. Probably some sort of firepower coming into them? I don't know. They've died in formation, though. Warlords of Umbar still coming in, trying to, to uh, I suppose, keep Muffins on his toes, but all those halberds are not really something that they want to mess with. Those catapults are almost out of protection, so I think if he worms his way through, he'll be able to do something. We have the evil men clashing over here on the left. Umbar going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the runic forces. Umbar a bit more disciplined, but rune not, uh, you know, they're not as wild and, and crazy as the Haradrim forces or, or Kandish infantrymen. They, uh, they can show a pretty good uh, defensive line. And a lot of AP, which is good up against the Alcronda Sven, um, who do pack on a bit of armor. And they're flooding all the way around and their cav is still safe. Alcronda's Faithful could deal with that. But uh, if those Warlords of Umbar come around, the issue is the Dragon Knights would definitely lose that fight up against the Alcronda's Faithful, but they would keep them in place, and that just would free up the Warlords to charge wildly into wherever they pleased. As Maven really is just overwhelming Inarius, and Arius is kind of having to... Oh, my goodness, nice! Oh, fantastic, that's awesome! You can climb up there and walk over. I really like this map. Yeah. That's a really cool move. Oh, wait, no. This this is what we want. This is what we want, boys. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, that's good to see, isn't it? Good, good, good. But yeah, still, Varag Mercenaries just raining hell. And uh, Anarius is now kind of just going to have to be holding. I think he's been kind of outmaneuvered by the um, by the forces of Rune. But he is going to be able to rely on the, um, the quality of Umbar to do some good work for him here. Ah, uh, Dragon Knights coming on in. As I say, the Alcron that's faithful, loving this fight. Oh god, the Warlord! Oh no, but... Oh, that's a shame, Maven. Maven, why? That's such a shame. Um, oh well. Uh, that's changed the game. That definitely has. I, th I think Inarius might be, might be alright now. Anyway, 32 for 24, so we are down. But we've lost a lot of fodder, whereas we've killed a lot of Lothlorien's forces. I don't think that... Uh, yeah, Starlings definitely made them hurt, but units, as I say, units like these Woodland Protectors, they've not been able to use their Javelins. They've been sort of stuck in melee. Probably a lot of these Archers haven't even been able to use up all of their ammunition. This was really a swamp on Starling. And um, Sen has come over to, to support him. Oh, Witchers have been opening up. We don't know how effective they've been, but uh, it's always good to try and use them well on a field battle. Oh, Lumbermen. Love Lumbermen. Uh, we saw them getting used very well by MSQ in the uh, in the recent siege battle, but still, just the Angmarim forces just overflowing now, and there's not really much in reserve for apart from the archers, of course, and it's all elven archers. So once they do use up their ammunition, and the wardens there too, they'll be able to be very effective on the front line. Uh, Swords of Rivendell trying their best, and uh, they'll they'll do okay. As I say, they're, they're up against those Avelin Vineguard who are very heavily armoured. All the Avelin units, very nicely armoured. Decent defensive skill and so on, but just such a low amount of damage. Kildren River Patrol need to use up their ammo, even if it's up against Blades of the Wood. Uh, you'd prefer the Hiriek though, of course. Uh, but no, they're going to fall on out. Let the uh, let the Angmar Halberds take the beating for you. Uh, snag, a, <laughs> snag a Stalker's jumped on up. I like the... Oh, oh, ouch. Oh, all right, okay, yeah, these are all... I thought they were Warlords of Umbar for a moment. But yeah, coming on back here now. Oh, dear. This has been horrendous for a lot of the Runic Calf. They've had a lot of bad fights. Ennis Rem there, caught by the Warlords of Umbar. Dismantled, but they're coming into the back of the Shield Bearers. And uh, that might be... Oh, of course, they're infantry backing them up a little bit, but still, that's not going to be fun for them. Alcronda's Faithful... Even with the stakes situation, the Alcarondas Faithful still had a messy fight and they came through with so few casualties. Casimir's Rangers popping up. Two units. Oh no, that's the same unit. It's very unusual that you see them sort of split up like that. But yep, East Strong Clansmen mixing it up with the Balkith Marksmen. Balkith Marksmen, though, are pretty competent in a fight after they've used up their ammunition. They should be able to carry through that. Corsair Infantry at their side as well, going up with the Flag Rim. That's going to be a bit more messy for the for the Corsair Infantry. Uh, Belgar Footmen there, showing how impressive they are just holding the line. But they do have a bit of armour that is going to be... Actually, sorry, these are Scion Rim. Ah, it's a Battle of the Spearmen here. 
but the Sanrem are a superior spearman. So they will break on through. Alcron S Legion, as I say, they'll they'll hold out until they're uh, until they're dead. Ah, which if the Innistrim have their way, that uh, is going to be happening sooner than they want. Alcron does. Alcron is faithful, however, will stop them from getting too many more charges like that. Overall, I think Rune is going to carry that fight. As uh, they're having sort of this fun little 1v1 over there where everybody else is just swamping in this area. 53 for 44, so we are down quite a bit, really. Um, but still, as I say, we're killing off elves and we've still got a lot of Mirkwood elves remaining. Oh, God. These, um, these poor... They're, they look like... Yeah, they're, they're definitely Isengard forces. Urukai Raiders, perhaps? But yeah. Anyway, Blades of Emond were coming up. Slicing into the Stalkers. Kildren River Patrol making it out. What have we got? The Survivors over here. Darwinian's has actually arrived in force. And Kellig is pretty badly surrounded. With the Arthander there, they'll fight for a, quite some time longer. How much cav power do we still have? Gwaithi Rockdor just slicing through the Glade Riders. Glade Lords, though. Glade Lords will get beaten by the uh, by the Gwaithi Rockdor, but... Uh, it's, uh, it's not going to be too fun. Oh, getting in the way of some uh, com com some kindred fire there, but uh, that hopefully won't happen too much. Just tearing into... Wow, that's such a long range. But yep, just breaking a few of those hammer... Well, no, definitely not the hammer guard. That's uh, that's your ally. But uh, no, Elder Emway guys kind of starting to struggle there up against the overwhelming phalanx of muffins. Cinder of the Girdle remaining. Trying to look for a good target. One good charge into the stalkers might be enough to finish them off. What are we going for here? Are you shooting at the Stalkers? Just trying to get them shredded, or are you finding a better target? I would probably want to go for a better target. Yes, they are. Good. A few guys shooting up and over, but Elven accuracy, even from those uh, sort of mid-tier Elven archers, is is going to be not too bad. The, they should even sort of be able to hit some good targets by firing up. Uh, stalkers there broken. Uh, that's going to mean that the Halberdiers are without some support. Let's go up to 0.7. Things have started to sort of settle. And uh, we have some more organized fights. These Barrow Whites, unable to really keep up with the quick movements, are just, they're going to be affecting the uh, percentage here. That's why, wow, okay, we climbed back really fast. Uh, I suppose it's, wait, what the hell happened? That went from being, I guess it was just the, the loss of cavalry power, and then uh, Anarius started using his cav aggressively. And they absolutely shredded them. That's crazy. So yeah, that's what's pulled the percentage back. I really had it in uh, in Maven's um, favor, like deep, deep in his favor for a while there. But no. Uh, so now he's just gonna have to try and survive. Um, I th as I say, it was just if he didn't run through those stakes, that really could have gone differently. And uh, let's zoom out a bit. Moving back on over. Barrow Whites are still there, but. If you can start to freely charge down the Barrow Whites, that might just be enough. Uh, no uh, no good old uh, Demons of the Desert in this battle to slowly whittle through them. Or quite uh, quite cinematically mince through them, I should say. Oh! Talk about a cinematic shot. Uh, I'm surprised that Troll of Angmar survived that strike. Oh dear. Oh, that's not what you want, Muffins. So, uh, yeah, they, they lost a few men to that. Uh, but I guess it was just like one or two. It was definitely more damaging to the elves than it was to them. But it was enough to break them. And now Koda's is coming out of the trees. And he's going to tear through these routing men. Doesn't matter if you've got an anti-cavalry bonus. An amazing anti-cavalry bonus from being a halberdier. But, uh, you know, when you're running, you're not using it. So he's just going to capture all these guys very quick. And ensure that they don't return. Because they would have, I feel. Glade Lords there, trying their best to be effective. Smash into the Woodland Protectors. Spearmen, got to be careful about that, but uh, if you get them in the back, it's fine. Kyriek, though, protecting them. What have we got here? Oh, Stalkers, mix it up with the enemy Archers. Just trying to stop them. Eldremwe Spears, actually struggling up against the Pike Line. Which is quite surprising. Oh, Witchers in melee. So they have used up all of their ammunition, that's good to see. Uh, it's definitely nice for them, and uh, they're quite effective in, in the melee fight afterward. It's good to it's good to see them get used out. Uh, Celtic's pikes struggling to find the way out, so they're just going to get broken. Um, Celtic's men have been very uh, they they've really been blasted today. 
being the only orc on the field uh, with a lot of very quality armies around you he's uh, he's had to sort of take the brunt of the damage elders of the elven king getting slammed by some stalkers but uh, they'll be able to resist that quite nicely you really need to get quite a good few cycle charges but stopping them from firing is is important stalkers more stalkers there jeepers kindred still have ammunition elder army sword masters let's have a look at them here only a few remaining, but uh, they've, oh, they're backed up by some Swords of Rivendell, and they're really not up against anything too significant, so they will uh, they will hold their own quite nicely. Let's go to one time speed again as um, as we approach the closing stages of this battle. We're still 72 for 72 though, as um, no one's barrel wides. Are we? They're moving toward the fight. Of course your infantry are kind of grabbing them. I don't know why I would do... They're su it's such a spread out unit now. Ah, damn, damn. I don't know what I would have wanted to do with it. Um, yeah, because I think they're just going to get sliced to pieces little bit by little bit. And when that cav comes on in... Right now the cav was trying its best just to make sure that Rune was out really properly out for the count. Which they're not... They're not entirely. They've still got some survivors. They're going to be moving on around. What's this over here? Warlords of Umbar though. Coming on in. And uh, the Alcarondas Faithful had already arrived, messing with the artillery. So it was good that uh, that Muffins was quite bold with his arty in the beginning, just tried to use it as much as he possibly could, because uh, they definitely won't have too much ammunition now. The catapult is done, as we can see. Angmar Halberds returning from routing. Of course, suffering a bit from uh, just suffering some few casualties as they ran uh, from Coda's calf. Oh, speaking of Coda's forces, these Herioth are broken. 23 of them, they might come back. But they've uh, they've run from the quite far from the front line already. Uh, Alcron has Faithful mixing up with the Eldrin, wait, sorry, Elvelin Marksman. Uh, not really a fight they want to stay in. Yeah, they're running away from that. But good little charge either way. As Dorwinian, uh, backed up by the Hammer Guard and, and a few of these Urex, have had some victory here. Okay, cool to see. Uh, yeah, scanning all the way all over. Those kindred are still firing. Uh, where the hell are those kindred? Oh gosh. It's rare. Lots of corpses. No, we just sort of... Ah, oh, there they are. It might have been the watchers we saw firing. I thought it was kindred fire though. By either, either way, they are out of ammo and they're going to be coming on in with their uh, sword master skills. Hammer guard remaining. We've got a lot of elites uh, surviving from the red team. Uh, 78 for 77 now. Elvelin Marksman mixing up with the Elder Emway Archers. Elder Emway Archers want to use up most of their ammo though, so they're they're pulling out. They've still got a few shots to spend. Coda's Woodland Realm Patrol still firing into these guys. Now the question is, do you just charge forward wildly? Oh, the Hammer Guard taking a volley from the Woodland Protectors. Luckily they've got that shield to take a bit of the damage from them, but uh, that's still not what you want to see. You'd much rather the Marksman take that volley or, well, anything. Uh, the only worse unit that would be would be the uh, the Glade Lords, you know, or uh, oh, Glade Masters, sorry. Uh, marksmen, uh, sorry, not Marksmen, Castamere's Rangers. I don't really use Rangers too much as um, as Umbar, but uh, I really do like the unit. Umbar as a whole has has a really cool aesthetic to me. Uh, charging on in here, Keldron River Patrol trying to fight alongside the Marksmen. Balakith Marksmen, though, are actually pretty damn solid in a fight, whereas, once again, the Avelin Marksmen, once they're kind of in there, they're kind of just surviving from their heavy armor. Uh, they're not really going to be able to rack up too many kills in melee. I'm definitely backed up by a few of Alcaron's Legion. I think this is going to be a bit too much for the for the red team there. Ah, uh, that is Lothlorien General dropped by a cavalry charge. Shouldn't be too much of an issue, though. Lothlorien is pretty low on numbers at this point. Oh, gosh. Barrowites just mixing up with the Balakith Shieldbearers and uh, and Marksmen there. Shieldbearers, well, uh, they, they've got the AP value from their mace. They'll do some good work against the Barrowites. And uh, their massive mass as well. They'll just kind of shunt them around. You know, the uh, Balakith, Mar Sorry, the Balakith Shieldbearers have that uh, eight mass, which is huge. I, this is a pretty entertaining fight to watch, actually, because they are just going to be walking like through them. It's going to be going not too bad. The issue with that, though, is you're going to push deep into their lines, and then you're going to be getting stabbed by like three uh, barrel whites at a time, which is not fun. And of course, then it's the morale damage. But yet, Rune is not out yet. He is still coming forward. 
He still has mercenaries to uh, to send off some arrows and some clansmen and Gamprin too. But apart from that, there is nothing more remaining. I'm still just, I'm wowed by this sort of Dunlending clansman just corpse pile there. Quite messy. Variag mercenaries. Let's see what uh, target Mevin's gone for. Uh, yep, we're still following them. Right into the back of the course, infantry. Not bad. Yep. As I say, uh, they're, they're not the most high damage ar archers in the game. They really are skirmish archers. Whereas the, uh, you know, the Narim are, are the, the damaging archers of Rune. And uh, I love to use the Narim, of course. But uh, the Varag mercenaries really fit better to my playstyle when it comes to a field battle. You know, when it comes to a field battle, I really want a skirmishing archer. My archers are not there to win me the battle. My archers are there to win me the skirmish fight. Use up your ammunition or kill your archers, and then I'll beat you with my infantry. That's that's how I tend to play anyway. Uh, oh, got these black guards surrounded now, though. Flagrim just mincing into them. Alcron that's faithful, tearing through these poor clansmen. Sion Rim coming on back. Uh, that's not a fun place to be. Uh, be an Alcron that's faithful. General there of Umbar is still around. But we're at 85 for 88, so we are ahead. And uh, still char. Whoa, wait, sorry. Nope. Charging into something. Ah, the Glade Masters are here in the back lines, trying to trying to achieve a good little charge against the Dorwinian men there. No Dorwinian elves. Looks like the push here has been fended off. Uh, yeah, a few a few of the Dorwinian forces still just f trying trying their best to pursue the Woodland uh, Woodland Realm Patrol, but uh, they've just been skirmishing away from them, and now that the cavalry is here, they've uh, they've brought them down. Zooming on back. I'll turn away Spears, Gwaithi Arthand, yes. Um, ooh, Blackguard, what are you going for? Yeah, yeah, Sion, good target there. Just eviscerating the right side as well, so that shield isn't coming into play. Um, I'm surprised those Blackguard actually survived. They were in a bad position for a while. Barrowites finally arrived. Oh, that looks like... Uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, oh, that might have been a hammer guard who was nearby. So I think that was the uh, the Angmar general. But the Barrowites are locked morale, so it's not too much of an issue. Sion Rim broken there. I think the Barrowites are maybe the last uh, the last hope. Um, oh, yeah, the Sentinels have everything in here surrounded. Oh, these poor Avella marksmen. I'm surprised they, they're held out against this and not just broken immediately. Oh, there's some infantrymen in amongst them, but still. Pretty well played there, boys. And um, and now we've still got over a thousand frames. But I think it's just the Barrow Whites. So we'll probably jump up to two times speed as uh, the Barrow Whites try to uh, try to fight back. Um, this is just a case of trying to try to lance them down. We might get an admit defeat from uh, from Muffins. There's no reason to though. Yeah, just just try it. Try and see what you do. You get a few more kills. But. Uh, pretty damn good overall. 88 is, is, is pretty solid for a pitch battle. And uh, I said I would expect them to maybe get 90. No, not with all the charging coming in. Uh, are they going to get 89? Oh, General there dropped. I like that. Yeah, he's, he looks cool in horse actually. I, I will usually not put my Dormin in general. I will usually not put Generals on horses. I don't really like to do that. I think it's just too risky. Uh, so, all in all, very solid. Uh, great to see this. As I say, great to see this map in a, in a team fight. Really, really chuffed with that. I've been, I've been wanting to see that for a while. It's a very interesting little map, and um, both for one v ones, of course, and for these group fights. And, uh, and that was nice. And uh, the issues, I, as I say, I just had it not been for that, um, the the losses to those uh, stakes, because um, that was some good units. That unfortunately Mevin lost. I don't think that that would have won it for them, but that would have meant that like Mevin would have beaten. I think Mevin would have definitely beaten Anarius there. Uh, but what he could have done after that, I don't know. It would have meant there would be no more cavalry coming on in. Uh, like there wouldn't have been the the, the Alcron as faithful. They were quite helpful toward the end game. And um, yeah, but all in all, not so bad. Sindar, they're very ah, yeah, nice, 175. They and they caught a bunch of prisoners too. You know, we, we saw them just I loved that. They just came running out of the forest just to 
just to grab a few of these routing uh, Uruk, uh, well, Angmar halberds. Ents, they're quite nice. It's always tough to read uh, what's being said there. 63. Okay, good. Yeah, uh, I like that they came in and they were they were sort of set in at the same time as the Trolls of the White Hand too. I, I think large units like that on a pitch battle, I, I feel a lot better about using them on pitch battles than I do on siege attacks. I, I do usually do. I, I think it's a bit more attractive to me. Uh, 196 from Woodland Protect is very good. Uh, oh, 157 for the Woodland Realm Patrol there. Oh, sucks about the Wardens of Ammon Lang. Too bad, boys. But I think they were probably shot down. Uh, they definitely received a few little catapult volleys. Elders of the Elven King there. Not so bad for them, you know. Um, they, they received quite a bit of focus too. All the Heri... Oh, 159 for the Heri Oath. Good stuff. Greenwood Watchers, poor guys. Probably shot up. And then the, the Elven Militia are, are always going to be not too bad either. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Anarius, massive kills, deeper sake, but he, yeah, he was up against sort of a very large army, but still, good stuff. Um, and a lot of capture, too. I think it was, just, uh, like, there was a mass route that just spread across Mevin's lines, and Anarius capitalized on it very, very well. Uh, so, yeah, he snagged him. And um, good sort of holding that sort of corner side as Coda, as Coda flipped around. I know that the boys definitely would have uh, talked about this a lot, they would, uh, they would have all sort of known what they were all, you know, planning to do. And this wasn't just a case of jumping right on into it. And, uh, yeah, so impressive. Um, I would have liked to have seen what would have happened if, if Mevin's Cav uh, remained strong. Mainly just to test the Alcron and Mass Faithful. Because I really like them as a unit. And um, I would have liked to see how they could have dealt with, like, a full unit of, um, of Dragon Knights. And, uh, and how quickly they could have kind of minced through them so that they could have dealt with the warlords then. But, yep, yeah, uh, Selic there, as I mentioned, he was kind of a punching bag, as you're going to be as an orc. You know, it's kind of your your role is to lurch forward. You know, he had a, his army was twice as big. He had twice as many men as, as Madras did, so he kind of needed to be the guy that was going to take the fire. And I think he did that pretty well. And um, pretty pretty rushed assault. Of, of course, but um, but it was what was required. It was what was required too, and good micro off the wargs as a whole. As I say, I if I take more than two units of cav, I my brain starts to break. So um, no, it's just not worth it for me. Well, well, cardlin, I take three, but I take two mercenary cav, so it doesn't really count. Um, then yeah, as it, definitely the right move from Fenrod to fall back or right off, right at the bat. Well, right off the bat, I think it was just like he, he definitely realized he was gonna lose that skirmish fight quite badly. So just get out, come around the other way, but not entirely sacrifice it. You know, it was a falling back. It wasn't just an absolute like, oh, okay, this is my allies' problem now. You know, he he held the focus of Starling, which is good. And then yeah, Starling um, advanced carefully, advanced properly. There's no way of really knowing that they were going to be pouring their full might on top of Starling, so I don't don't blame him for not really being ready for it. He did make them bleed for it, but as I say, it was just the big problem was I think his javelins weren't able to fire off much of their ammo, and uh, those two units of woodland protectors could have gotten a lot more kills, I think, and uh, and really stemmed the tide. I think Sin was on the ball. He was he was there like right when he needed to be. So, um, you know, that was that was impressive. And uh, But he didn't just throw himself on in wildly, which could have gone badly. I know Dorwinian's got some good morale across the board, but uh, but it still could have gone very poorly if he if he was too crazy with it. And uh, I think, yeah, Muffin's there. I'd love to know if this was a long time ago that this battle was played, so I totally accept if nobody knows, but I would have loved to have known how much, how many kills the artillery actually got. Uh, it sucks about that break there with the Angmar Halberds. That was too bad. Because that was a good, like, he killed, I think he killed like two of his own men. And he killed like a bunch of elves. But it was like, nope, that's enough. We're out here. Sorry, but it, you know. So, uh, always, da always dangerous. And then Mevin, yeah, we talked about that. Good to stay in the fight all the way through. Just supporting at the end. Trying to do his best there. But uh, sucks about the mass route. Like, yeah, as soon as things went bad, they went very bad. Um... I get why I get why it was changed, but I do I do miss the Sion Rim being uh, like a, a, a little bit of a morale buffer, um, you know, just to keep the boys together. But I, I think it's totally fair that they don't have that. Uh, Rune doesn't need it, 
you know i really don't think they need it their morale is all right across the board but it's good to just get those up there just to provide a bit more solidity which they do as an entity anyway without that morale buff and uh, oh no thank you guys very much see you later